Welcome to Best of the Best, a show about having meaningful conversations with business-driven industry thought leaders to find out just what exactly makes them the best of the best. Fred Parrish is your host and most recently co-author, along with Michael E. Gerber of the brand new book, The E-Myth, Chief Financial Officer. Fred draws on his vast experience as an author, speaker, and financial expert to sit down with a variety of well-known guests each week and get to the bottom of what exactly makes them and their business successful. Welcome to the Best of the Best. And now, here's your host, Fred Parrish. Well, hi, everyone. Uh, again, welcome to the Best of the Best program. And uh, today, our show is titled Commitment, Make Your Dreams Happen. And our special guest today is Bobby DePorter. Thanks for being on, Bobby. Uh, thanks for having me. Sure. Well, let me just uh, give you a little information about Bobby. Uh, she is an early pioneer in the field of accelerated learning. With knowledge gleaned from co-founding a highly successful business school, she went on to apply those same strategies to school-age age children. Bobby uh, co-founded Quantum Learning Network, a leading education company producing super camp summer enrichment programs with 80,000 graduates and programs in 14 countries. In quantum learning education with school-wide programs for teachers, administrators, students, and parents. She has positively impacted over 100,000 teachers. Through these programs and the Eight Keys of Excellence movement, she has impacted more than 20 million young people over the last 30 plus years. Bobby is also president of Learning Forum International, a nonprofit organization that delivers eight keys of excellence character programs to families and schools and provides teacher training and super camp scholarships. Along with Stedman, Stedman Graham, Bobby co-founded CASE, which is the Community Alliance for Youth Success, a volunteer collaborative giving youth a voice for change. CASE produces the Youth Success Week, a national model for other communities. She is the author of over a dozen books, including Excellence in Teaching and Learning, The Quantum Learning System, The Seven Biggest Team Problems and How to Turn Them into Strengths, Quantum Teaching, Quantum Success, and The Eight Keys of Excellence. Bobby is the recipient of the Women of Influence Lifetime Legacy Award, the Global Presence Humanitarian Award from Parenting 2.0, and was on Fast Company Magazine's Fast 50 list of leading creative thinkers. Again, welcome, Bobby. We're really happy to have you here today. I uh, really want to uh, learn a whole lot more about what you have been doing and how you're able to impact so many people uh, with your programs. So if you would uh, just kind of tell us a little bit more so that we can frame the conversation uh, properly. Well, I just feel really blessed over the years, that, you know, in, uh, meeting some really influential people in my life and one thing leading to another. But basically, my life is, is about youth and learning and discovering my passion and being able to fulfill and it had such opportunities that it just kept growing. So to start with my story, I was, you know, married with, uh, I was young when I got married and had two children and was just very happy doing what I was doing. And then discovering, I felt like I really wanted to do something more. Um, and then I heard about a real estate company in San Francisco. So it was brand new and just opening. So I just went in to talk feeling like, okay, I'm gonna check out some things. And went in for an interview and then came for the second interview. But I always remember that time because I, they talked a lot about you know, that they, about uh, positivity and relationships and that really following your goals and that you'd be able to create a lot. So I piqued my curiosity at that time to join and I went in for an interview and they ended up hiring me and telling me I had to make, I remember way back, this is in the early 70s, that I had to make $30,000 a year in commissions to join this real estate and investment company. and. 
it's like, okay. And so without experience, I started and on my first day made a deal that ended up with a $30,000 commission to me. So I always thought, wow. wow, okay, that was a start. So we did some really beautiful things at that company. We focused on win-win um, and relationship and being responsible for your goals and so many things that are important in our lives and make such a difference. And so the company grew and hundreds wanted to work there. So I started a business school for entrepreneurs, which was a six week residential program where we brought in experts, but it was really about how to learn, you know, how to uh, be an effective learner and positive environments. And so it led to being written up in national magazine and more people hearing about us. So it was the effectiveness of that program. And then, trying one program as an experiment for youth because so many were parents and said, hey, we need to do something for our own kids. And so tried one program for youth. That was 37 years ago now. It's hard for me to believe that wow. it's been that long. And so now here we are with programs around the world and working with schools across the country and also with schools in other countries. Well, that's great, Bobby. So we're going to talk mostly about commitment today. Uh, but if you can tell us a little bit about the eight keys of excellence and how uh, you were able to pull that together and have the impact that you do. It was in the early days of SuperCamp and working with youth and knowing how important principles are in our life. I actually grew up with it because my father was into Napoleon Hill and Think and Grow Rich and right. all of that. So I was hearing about it as a young age with Andrew Carnegie and all the wonderful you know, success principles. But we really dove into the ones that were seemed to be making the most impact or communicated best to youth and came up with our eight keys of excellence. And now they are in schools across the country. We teach it at our youth program. Um, we have estimated we've impacted over 20 million people through the eight keys of excellence. We've had whole cities adopt them. We've had businesses adopt them. And it really is about who you are as a person. It's creating that strong core of excellence inside of you uh, are the eight keys of excellence. And one of those keys is commitment, which is make your dreams happen. Uh, take positive action and follow your vision unwaveringly. So it's such an important and, and key to our life and our success. Yeah, absolutely, no doubt. I, I spent a lot of time early in my life in sports. And so commitment at a certain level, high school and college, and even at an international level, I, I understand a little bit about commitment. But uh, if you can tell us how commitment is so important and, and key, a, a key factor not only in our business life, but also in our family and uh, just life in general. Well, I don't take commitment lightly. You know, I make different agreements in my life, but I hold when I commit to something as something very different. Commitment to me is not asking myself, will I or won't I? It's just, what do I need to do to move forward? So a lot about commitment for me is being very focused on what I want to achieve and being clear what I want to achieve. And then just it's what's next and keep on the path and, and make it happen. So it's, it's really about making that, that vital decision to actually do something and then stick with it. So how do you maintain that positive action, that, that positive attitude about whatever it is? Because eventually it's going to get difficult and sometimes you're going to want to just quit and walk away and do something different. But if you are committed, if you're fully sold out to whatever that is, uh, that's not an option. Yes. Well, one is when we make a commitment, it's often to something that we want and we're motivated about. And so, you know, when we want something, then we're more likely to do whatever it takes to make it happen. We have a definition of discipline and motivation, and it takes both to maintain. You know, we talk about discipline is doing what needs to be done when it needs to be done when you don't want to do it. And motivation is doing what needs to be done when it needs to be done when you want to do it. 
So it's that want often that, that maintains and carries us forward to really um, staying with it, with it, with what we want. You know, we have lots of ups and downs in our, our lives. Um, you know, you do what needs to be done next. When you have a challenge, it's not, will I continue? It's what do I need to do differently in the future? I had one big challenge for me that was just a, a really big uh, financial cra crash. And there was a whole story around it. You know, it was like one thing leaded to another. It was all with good purpose and what we thought was really going to help to grow. And there was a time when something happened that uh, I lost everything over a very short period of time. And things were taken away from me, from my possessions to um, all the real estate I had. And it was a very trying time. And I always think back to that because I felt really examined about who am I at that time and am I good enough and all those things that go on. And I made one of the most important discoveries in my life. And that is that nobody can take away your values, your interests, your strengths. I knew what I created um, before this happened. And so when um, I, this happened and things were taken away, it's like I still had me. I still had the same person that created it right. in the first place. And that is so uh, freeing to know that nobody can take away my values and strengths. That's impossible. Only I could do that. So it gives a lot of um, motivation to just keep going and and you stay on the path. Yeah, so the, the ability to pick yourself up and dust yourself off and, and keep going, right? It, it's... It gets back to the adage that, uh, you, you know, success is getting up one more time than you fall, right? And so it's, it's always that forward motion in, in trying to keep your eyes on whatever goal that is. So can you explain how that commitment is, is not made lightly? These are life-changing decisions that we make and it's it's about making that decision so strong that there really is no going back you have to fully commit and you have to fully sell out to that idea it's really going inside right in your gut you know when it's right and you've made that commitment and it's what you want to do you know and i I look to see my commitment to youth and learning and it excites me. It's like, what are those things that you are excited about or, you know, that you would choose to do if you had time to do, or it's the direction or what are you reading, paying attention to, who are the friends you gravitate towards, all those things come into it. So when you know that there's a commitment out there, oftentimes it's making the statement and telling other people. You know, taking those first steps, this is what I'm going to do. So you keep that goal out there and can do whatever it takes to get there. No, Sometimes it could be flexibility to get there, but, you know, you do whatever it is to achieve that goal. It's always just what's next. Right. No, that that's just, uh, that's fantastic. So you've, you've written before that commitment, and I'm going to read this so I don't uh, get it wrong. It is the breathtaking moment of making a compelling decision, jumping in and go going forward with gusto. So how do you get to that moment? How do you come to that point? Is there a, a process? Is it um, a, a, a way of looking at life? I mean, how do you get there? What is really reflecting? You know, we're so busy in our life. Often we're just what's in front of us to do next that's uh, to do. And when you wake up in the morning, sometimes you feel like you can hardly get through the day because you have so much that you have to do that you don't take time to stop and think. So it's spending the time and reflection, you know, whether it's journaling, talking to another, going to a quiet place, but just spending time to think about what is your life about? And what do you want to create? And it's that clarity being clear on what you want. You know, I actually went through a period of time when I didn't know what I wanted. And I always remember, I felt like there was this growing feeling inside of me that I wanted to do something more, but couldn't figure it out. And it was just having conversations with other people, 
paying attention to what I'm interested in or gravitated for. Sometimes I took some, uh, signed up for some classes or some lectures on things. I just got involved and interacted with people always, you know, being aware of what am I interested in and what's resonating with me. So it's being clear and discovering who you are. And once you have that clarity, that and you jump in and you declare it to the world that's where okay you're now on your path well yeah and i, I would think that it's that declaration to the world that uh it gives you that uh, completely sold out um, commitment so let, let's just talk about uh business for a second um in in our business we teach owners that the approach to managing at least the financial aspects of their business and really it, it includes everything really uh, strategic operational financial uh, it, it doesn't matter it's all about process and it is about how you are able to replicate those actions over time with certain objectives in mind and be able to have checkpoints to know if you are actually a cop accomplishing those things. So in, in terms of commitment, how would you uh, be able to uh, develop that commitment inside a small business, for example? Is it bringing people in for conversation? Is it part of a process? Is it a, um, an ever-present uh, idea? How do, you, how do you advise business owners to get there? One is knowing what works out there in other businesses and then look to see what's unique for us because there's uh, systems that work out there and it's paying attention to what those systems are and following them. There is a man that I met a long time ago, but he made such an impression on me. He was a very famous architect and he built high rises in Alaska. He had a system for doing it, you know, what the steps were and the order and what you had to do to make it happen. So he could build a high rise in a very short period of time because they have a very short building season. And he shared it with the world. And he said, you know, I never had to worry about a competitor coming and being able to do it because everybody wants to tweak, tweak or change or they didn't want to follow the system and do it their own way. So one is really paying attention to what works out there in the world. What are the systems that work and following those systems? And then the other is knowing what is unique to who you are and what your business is and, and staying to the plan, yeah. staying with what works. You can't keep tweaking things. And then when you find something that works, stay with it rather than, oh, I'm bored. So I'm going to tweak it so much that, you know, I put myself at risk. So if something works, it's doing that over and over again and staying with the system. Yeah, that, that kind of makes me chuckle because I have known people in my career that uh, thrived in chaos and, and they created chaos intentionally. Uh, it, yes. was, it was just an amazing thing to watch. They just, I agree. Yeah. yeah, they just I never got to like where they the wanted world. to go. Right. It, it, it was amazing. Now, uh, Bobby, you also wrote the decisive act of making a commitment. When we decide to do whatever it takes to reach a goal, sets in motion an energy field that really propels us on our path. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about that and tell us how that energy field really is set in motion? Yes. Well, it's again, it goes back to that clarity of being really clear about what excites you. You know, when it gives you enthusiasm and excites you and you have that as a path and you set in your yourself that you'll do whatever it takes because we spend so much time on should I or shouldn't I will I or won't I and taking all that out it gives you a lot more time in life for one thing is like you you make that decision and you do whatever it takes and sometimes it's being flexible you know this thing about being flexible sometimes if an uh, aspect is not working on getting to my goal, okay, I might have to try some other things. And if I'm the one that put that particular strategy in place, then it 
ego gets involved and we have to watch out for that as well. Oh, absolutely. Just, you know, keep going because of my ego and I don't want to look bad and I'm the one that put the idea out in the first place. But it's really examining what we put out and um, what is the most uh, strategic next step to take. Yeah, so is there... Examining the exalt. You know, we have three questions that we often ask ourselves is, what happened? What did I learn? And what will I do differently next time? And that's really forward motion that happens from that, not dwelling in, I made a mistake, this isn't working right, but it just keeps us going forward. Yeah, that's interesting because we take a very similar approach in uh, financial planning in small companies. You set the, the target, you evaluate how you're doing relative to that target, and then you adjust, and it's just that cycle that you go through over and over again. It seems that is a, a similar approach. So uh, how do you know internally when you have actually come to a decision that would qualify as a commitment? Well, just going through, you know, knowing what uh, we're passionate about, what our purpose in life is. A lot of people go through life feeling like they've never discovered it. And I think they've never discovered it because they haven't made that a priority to think about. Because if we reflect and write, what are our strengths? What are our interests? What do we find ourselves reading? What do we spend time? What gets us excited about? Um, and I'm a big fan of writing things down, whether that's journal or just writing or listing or discovering. And then it's eyes to see, you know, that there are opportunities that come in front of all of us. And sometimes, you know, it's like we're busy and we don't even see them. So I always say it's eyes to see that the opportunity is in front of us. And then the next thing is to say, yes, take action. Because so often opportunities come and oh, I don't have time, or I'm not that good, I don't know if I'll be successful at it, and all this chatter that goes on. So we want to quiet that chat, chatter so that when opportunity comes, we could see what, what do I want to say yes to and what will make a difference for me. Yeah, so I guess that comes back to the, the confidence to move forward on those opportunities. And uh, again, that ability to make that uh, that commitment. So how do we stay inspired to keep going forward? It, it is a difficult thing when you have put a lot of energy and a lot of your, your personal self out there. Uh, again, you said earlier that you have to you know, tell people you've made this commitment. And if things don't go well, that is a, that's a difficult place to be. How do you stay inspired and continue with that uh, that positive movement forward it's to remind ourselves you know that uh this made a big impact on me once is that I, w I was waking up in the morning and i was particularly tired so the alarm went off and i'm laying there and i went oh wanted to pull the blankets up and just stay in bed longer and i'm just so tired so i turned over and sat up and i started to put my feet on the floor and just before they my feet touched the floor. It's like this uh, idea came through my mind and remembrance. And it was just like, oh my gosh, I almost forgot that I love what I do. <laughs> you know? And the moment I had that, it was like, of course, you know, you get up because you get to do what you do during the day. So it's remembering, you know, that, you know, yes, we all get tired at times or we all have too many to do's or how am I going to get through this? But keeping our eye on the big picture. I'm also a fan of, of, you know, being very clear what our vision is. It's been almost 40 years, over 35 years that I created and wrote um, our vision statement. And it is so drives us today. And I think that we're still in business because of this vision statement. And it's not just a sign on the wall in our office. You know, it's something we reflect on. It's so meaningful for us. And our vision statement is an international model of excellence, facilitating the shift in learning, resulting in creative, educated, responsible people participating in a global community. And I think about that as that's our way of changing the world. 
And everything that we're doing today aligns with that vision. And it's still what I'm committed to and what's drawing me forward. Well, you can certainly see the, uh, the emotion and uh, the commitment. In, in your face as you say that. It, it's, uh, you know, it comes back to the, uh, the idea that if you do something that you love, you never work a day in your life. So, and, and we can see that on, uh, in your expression. So how have your own commitments uh, shaped your, your dreams and your career and, and your life in general? I think about going back into that first commitment. You know, I talked, uh, told you about that I was working with adults and what that is. And I am very passionate about learning, was very excited about that. And then doing the first youth program, the two things came together, both youth and learning for me. And it was at the very first program that at the end, students come up and share. Well, one of the students at the very first program, there were there were 64 students, and I know can still almost remember all of their names, I believe. Um, but there was one small boy that didn't raise his hand or participate much. And he was always there, never a problem, but I never saw him raise his hand or say anything. So at the very last um, closing session, students were so enthusiastic, and they were coming up in front and talking about everything they learned, and it was very exciting. And I look back and I saw this small boy and he raised his hand and it was like, oh my goodness, Derek raised his hand. So I invited him up and he stood in front of the, state, uh, the other students and he just stood there for a while and started to talk and the full, uh, um, all the participants, all the students, they just started clapping so hard for him. And they even jumped up on top of the table, standing there and stomping and clapping. And I looked at this young boy's face and his eyes were so big and his shoulders dropped down and he I could he was wondering I could tell it's like oh my goodness and the thought that came to me is he will never ever be the same and that's where I made the commitment it's like the shift that happened in me of wow we can have this kind of effect on a on a child on a student you know that's what I want to commit my life to and then on our 25th anniversary we had a big celebration. We had a few hundred people here um, talking about all we created and where we were out in the world and we're in schools and all this that had grown from that very first program and that very first commitment. And so I went on the internet and I actually found Derek and invited him and he came with his father and his brother to our celebration. And 25 years later, I was able to have him stand up and acknowledge him. It's like, the courage it took for him to stand up front, I was so moved that I made the commitment to focus my life on youth and learning and make that commitment. And now, you know, how we've grown and the impact we're making around the world now was for that moment. So you never know when that moment is going to be for you, but that was my moment and my commitment. And it's changed the rest of my life and a lot of other people's lives. That's fantastic, Bobby. That, that is just a, a great story. Uh, and I, I have known a few of those moments along the way and have seen those uh, with other people as well. And it, it, it's just a great thing to see. Bobby, I really appreciate all the wisdom that you've given us, all the uh, information and um, teaching people how commitment is so, so vitally important to everything that we do. So are there any uh, other thoughts that you want to leave the audience with? Well, one is that it's begin it. You know, you have um, an idea, you have something that looks like it's something that you're passionate about and knowing what that is. And when you want to make a commitment, that's the first step and you, you need to begin it. There's a quote um, that is from um, William Hutchinson Murray who has um, led the Scottish Himalayan expedition in 1950. And I always think about that because he said, until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back and always inefficiency. It goes on to say, the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too, and all sorts of things occur. 
So it's really that moment of just being willing to do whatever it takes and take that first step. That's just fantastic. And, uh, and, and I have a quote here from uh, Peter F. Drucker, and it is, unless commitment is made, there are only promises and hopes, but no plans. And we run into that all the time. Uh, you know, the, the adage that uh, if you uh, fail to plan, you plan to fail. Uh, we see that play out every day in, in small businesses, and it, it's terribly unfortunate. But again, I want to thank you. I, I just I love the conversation. Uh, a lot of what you have said, I just sit here and reflect on a lot of things that have happened in my life personally and uh, certainly in my business career where uh, if the commitment was not there, uh, very few things would have happened. So I really appreciate you and thank you for being on with us. And I want to thank... Um, a special uh, closing uh, here. I want to thank uh, our executive producer, Robert Browning, and he is with uh, Profit Experts, and Zach Lewis, our digital broadcast producer with Real News PR. Everybody comes together and puts a lot of time into making these things happen, and I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the best of the best. To find out more about Fred, his latest book, or his acclaimed automated CFO software, The Profit Beacon, follow the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash theprofitbeacon, or visit his website at www.theprofitbeacon.com for exciting offers.